swear, I swear to God, if you do that while we okay. on stage, please, okay. I'm gonna I'm I'll just delete it. I'll delete the. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Horrible Decisions. I wanted to, we, excuse me, I forgot, I don't do this show solo, but you know, <laughs> I hate that hoe anyway. Um, we are launching our Patreon account. I'm so super excited. So we, what we're going to be doing with Patreon is you guys are going to be able to subscribe um, to us. And with these comes tons of goodies and shit. Do you want to talk about the tiers that we're going to yeah, offer our listeners? So because we're, you know, a little slutty slut sluts, we have named them after bases. So if you want to go to first base with us, it's just $2 a month thinking um, us for the free content we've been giving y'all niggas for six months. A uh, second base is a bonus episode and video footage. So every single month we'll be providing bonus episodes to start. It's going to be one a month. And as we get more Patreons, we're going to possibly be doing two or two, maybe yeah. one every other week. So we're super hyped up to do that. Um, and third base, the best base. I most she people... really likes this base and this base I, like I think is really good and I like to give so this is the third base final base yeah um, with this base this is going to be $15 a month and what you're going to get is everything before so you're going to get the bonus episodes you're going to get the video footage and you're also going to get a t-shirt um, that's if you're a member at this tier for four consecutive months but the well, best part the best part of this shit is we're also going to allow you to help us plan our shows um, so we're going to be able to receive receive topics from you guys and whoever's topics we choose we're gonna go ahead and shout you guys out on the show now with this will possibly become longer episodes and no advertisements we're really trying to eliminate ads i'm kind of tired of hearing about blue apron and talk space <laughs> a bitch is hungry and needs her mental health checked all of the time now so i really want you guys to check this out um it's not like you have to log on to a whole nother website to um, you know, listen to another episode. It's going to be in your Apple podcast just for you or SoundCloud. I don't know. Don't quote SoundCloud, me SoundCloud, all, all of that. It, it'll it'll be will. really easy to access and I can help um, some of you guys who have never heard of Patreon. I'll walk you guys through it either via my Twitter. Um, we also are getting a Horrible Decisions Twitter. Shout out Wheezy. We are also coming to Facebook. We're getting on all the platforms. So if you guys have any questions, we will be able to answer those. Um, and I guess let's get on with the show. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, so welcome yet to another episode of Horrible Decisions. We have Rush Limbaugh. Hey, Rush in the cut, you know. <laughs> so we are here for another episode. I'm your girl, Mandy B, a.k.a. Full Core Pumps, a.k.a. That Bitch. And, and I'm just Tweezy. <laughs> and we have Rush A.k.a. Honey Crip. Um, <laughs> we'll get into that later. We'll get into that. But um, I guess we can introduce our guest. Now, I'm going to let Wheezy steerhead this episode for oh, many shit. reasons um i guess what i want to go ahead and put out in the beginning of the show is a disclaimer um for anyone a part of the lgbtq community i don't want to offend anyone with any of the questions that i may ask throughout this show or with anything that i may say that can come off as offensive i'm learning just like you guys and just like a lot of our listeners i am not politically correct 1000 percent of the time so i just want to Throw that out there and y'all. Michelle Lane. <laughs> so I just want to throw that out there before this episode begins. So, Weezy, do you want to introduce who we have in no, the studio? No, Rush, or, introduce yourself, please. There we go. All right, it's Rush. Um, I go by Rush London. Um, no shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. The accent kind of says that all. Mm -hmm. You see why I like to fuck niggas with accents now? <laughs> Oh, God damn. <laughs> the ring's visible, guys. The ring's visible. I yes. know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me talk about before she comes with my ass. Definitely Mary. <laughs> um, yeah, so what do you, like, so you do BK Chat. That's how we found you. Yeah, so um, basically I was on a platform called um, BK Chat or Bat Chat. Um, it started off in London as a web series or a debate platform um, on YouTube. Um, basically to discuss various different topics in today's society that are controversial. It's a panel based um, that provides different opinions and perspectives on various topics. Um, and basically what they did is a spin-off that came to New York. Um, I, audition I auditioned and I'm a cast member on I it. didn't know that you weren't on the UK one. I wasn't on the UK How one. Oh, that's crazy, that? right? What the fuck? Well, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't on the UK one because when, when Backcheck came out, I was actually already living out here. So when How I long heard about uh, a year and five months. Okay. So when I heard about it coming over here, I was like, I'm down. I'm gonna audition and see see what's good. Add my perspective. You know what I mean? Let people hear my opinions and try and try and really um, give people some thought provoking opinions so that the, the 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 conversations are 
are not just one track minded. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I feel like I've done that. So It's so funny that you also say it's back chat because I had... Black I, chat. Yeah, I thought it was BK, BK chat. Brooklyn. So I'm literally like posting you and people are on my Twitter like, BK chat, I ain't seen not now one of the motherfuckers in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't... I didn't know so it was black from chat Brooklyn, I definitely thought it was BK Brooklyn chat. Right. So I'm glad that you kind of um, corrected us. No, hey, I hey, remembered I, you. I might not be right, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I heard her say black chat. Um, okay. So I remembered you because we recently interviewed Jalissa and her magical pussy mm-hmm. and you guys were ready to get on us because you like all y'all bitches want to do is have a nigga pay your bills yeah and fuck yeah. me <laughs> that's pretty much yeah, why, why else do you listen to the show <laughs> so um you were the person that said is that all is that all <laughs> <laughs> you did that so well he was Just so like hyped <laughs> and I was like this nigga is me <laughs> so, I'm not gonna lie yeah that, that kind of caught me off guard because I was like yo you're really saying that this is all that you have to to give you know what I mean it's like for me it was more a question of not so much her man right and what right. her man expects from from her or or requires or anything like that it was more a case of is this really like the weight of you as a woman like right. like that was where I was coming from do you know what I mean because it was like as a woman like of course your pussy is 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 great it's, it's magical apparently <laughs> I, I don't know you know what I mean but, <laughs> I mean it must, she, she got a nigga so she, it, does, she must yeah. be doing something right she but, does. you know what I'm saying but at the same time it's like as a woman there's so much that y'all have to offer yes that holds so much weight and I feel like in society we generally hold pussy on a pedal stool absolutely and it's like if that's your only contributing factor to relationship, how long is this really going to last? That right. was kind of my mindset. And it was like, how are you comfortable with, with saying this when potentially that could be all that your relationship's based on then? And, and I think we dug too much into that because we were like, well, we still don't get it. We still don't get it. We still right. don't get it. And I, listen, it's got to be good. Um, but now you're on our show because a new video has come on to BK Chat where you came out as trans to your panel. I was curious, did you... Before you auditioned, did you tell them? No. Wow. What made you change? What made you decide to come out? So, to be honest, it came from a selfish place and a selfless place. And I say that in a sense of coming from London, it's evident that I'm known in a sense. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I've been to school with people. I've been to college with people. I've worked with people. There's going to be... For me, it was like, I didn't want anyone to feel like they held weight over me, like they was going to be the puppet master to my life and my story right. and be trying to out me, you know what I mean? Like on social media, be like, oh, I know him. He used to be. I didn't want anyone to feel like they had that power over me. So that was the self. Because let's be piece. real, they would have never knew. No, nah, I ain't going to lie. Nah. I would have never known. But we, we want to get really deep into the discussion of you being a trans man. Is mm-hmm. that cr- That's the that's, correct terminology. Yes. Now, so we're going to get into the trans man discussion. But prior to that, we kind of like to break the ice with our guests and yeah. kind of, you let's know. Let's do it, let's do it. So I, I have some questions. Wait, I don't even have your question. Like, oh, see. girl, I'll pass it because I got some good ones. Oh, shit. Um, so what we like to do with our guests when they come on the show is we like to play either this or that or have you ever. Right. And w- I decided to do this or that with you because I think that would be, you know, very telling. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to start off fairly simple, okay? So would you rather <coughs> your parents walk in on you masturbating Damn. or walk in on your parents masturbating? Oh, shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> Weezy, Weezy looks like she's thinking so hard right now. My mom's walked in on me masturbating. She's walked in on you. What, what would you rather do? Mm. <laughs> mm. I feel like I prefer them to walk in on me. You prefer them to yeah, walk in on you? Because you're always getting caught doing shit. Right, and it's like, yeah, and it's like as a like... parent, as a parent, when you have a child, like, as much as you don't ever expect to, to walk in on your child masturbating, <laughs> as a parent, you know that there's going to be certain things that you walk into right. with your child. You know what I'm saying? Whereas as a child, you don't ever think that you're going to walk in on your parents doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh my God, I walked into my mom jerking my dad off one. No, oh, shit. no. Like, and my mom that was like, I'm my fixing brain. his pants! <laughs> 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 I was like 11 years old. I remember calling her by her first name. I said, Jewel, good night. (laughs) I would die. So this is another one. This is rather funny. So would you rather have sex with someone who never showers or someone who never brushes their teeth? Oh, man. (laughs) Teeth. They're both Teeth. Bend them over. Yeah, that's facts. Oh, okay. You're right. If I smelt the nani and it was Wait, you'd bend the guy over? Yeah, for real. What would you do? You just said bend them over. 
Oh, okay. But like, think about it. You, I've, I'm sure everyone slept with someone they've never kissed. Exactly. That's Boy, true. You right. That's true. So, a whole lot of niggas I don't be kissing. Nigga, I can smell. <laughs> <laughs> My nose is stuffed up right now, and I can smell. <laughs> okay, and then would you rather? Date someone who refuses to cuddle or who refuses to go down on you. Refuses to go down. Really? God, that was so that fast. That was so fast. I really like cuddling. I'll go a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to cuddle with your dog? I could get a teddy bear. I, listen, I could get a, 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 what's it called? An electrical blanket. That feels like a cuddle. No, it's yeah, not Yeah, man, wrap myself same. up in that. You know what, though? I guess uh, here we go. The man, the man in the room is fucking saying, I just, of course, just let me get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. That's got to happen, man. <laughs> oh. Okay, and I have one more. This is um, one that I'd like, you know, either both of y'all to answer. Would you rather have sex in front of your closest friends or have sex on a video with your face blurred out but circulated online? Video. Hell no. I ain't gonna lie. I have lie. tattoos, bro. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't know what you gotta wear. You bro, wear I be asking wear my old. friends to watch me. I'm not, I'm not gonna I, lie. I've, I've beat in front of my friends, so. You beat off in front of your I, friends? I fucked in front of one of my friends. Like, they walked in and they went. I didn't stop. And I was like, yeah, cool, calm. It's my bridging, isn't it? Oh, I know. That's right. I, I want all of my friends to see me. Fuck. That's what you know. You just. I know well. my back strokes good. You get me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, wedding ring. Let me calm down. <laughs> Okay, um, my estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to see we're all laughing now. Um, well, what else we like to do on our weekly shows? I'm not sure if you listen, but we have kinks of the weeks. Mm-hmm. Wait, kinks, kinks of the, of the week. week of the week. Yeah, weeks, not weeks. Do you right? have it? Um, you want me to read it? Yeah, I like the one you had because it's gross. Which one? Ugh. Oh, that one. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't screenshot that one. So we are gonna go with yours. Oh, okay. We're well, I guess go y'all can guess what that and one was. This is really um odd. <laughs> it's uh, a galmatophilia. Wait, say a what? Wait, a, say I want to say it like I'm not retarded. I know. Hold on. <laughs> a galmatophilia. There we go. Hold on. I say it like a galmatophilia. <laughs> I feel like I go on Wikipedia. To find <laughs> That's what, what we do. Means. A gal- <laughs> Wait, a top one. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, nah, I'm okay, not a galmatophilia. It's um a paraphilia in which a person gets aroused by dolls, statues, and mannequins. <laughs> I watched a documentary on that. I <laughs> just Yo, it's mad. Yo, did you see the guy in love with his car? Yeah, like, it was crazy. Dude, people really fall in love with things. So anyway, I, you know, anytime there's a kink, they're always weird. I try to like put myself in that person's shoes. I think I feel like that about my bed. Wait, you, you get aroused your bed? by your bed? I don't, I don't get aroused buy it but like i get really turned on at the idea of going to bed i'm excited to go home to my bed i feel like i'm in love with it see i don't know so i'm gonna admit something that i probably shouldn't but it doesn't matter i was young okay so before you stuck your doll up your pussy no so before i started having sex like i had this big teddy bear that I grew up with. <laughs> oh, we all hunched a bear. Did we all used to hunch our stuffed animals? I did. Wait, the edge did you of ever bed. hunch? I didn't even have wait, stuffed you, animals. No. Wait, well, you never hunched. So you used to hunch the edge of your bed. Yeah. And I used to hunch this big stuffed animal. So you've never hunched anything that wasn't a person. What have you rubbed yourself against? Because I feel like every little kid normal? does that. Pussy. No. Tits. Well, I like really used to like grind. Like I used to ride the hell out of my fucking teddy bear growing up, and. I I've probably, come from the edge of the bed. I'm not gonna lie; it used to make my pussy really wet, and I was like probably seven or eight or nine, <laughs> really <laughs> fucking the shit out of my teddy bear. And so, ne- when when you said that we were gonna have this as a kink, I was like, "Bro, fucking statues!" But I'm not gonna lie; there's this big old statue in Columbus Circle. Oh my and it's god! A big old- <laughs> well, it's but- Christopher Columbus, nigga. But no, that's not the one with his dick showing. I'm sh- talking about the the mall where you have the big oh, sumo yeah. guy, and it's like a. And I just like to look at. The penis on the statue. I think it's you know, I'm not turned yeah, but on doesn't by give you a, it. Exactly. No, I'm not turned All on right. it. But I was turned on by rubbing my goddamn um, clit on that. my goddamn <laughs> tail. <tenu. laughs> Honestly, I can rub it on anything. I've been doing this new thing with Lover Boy since he got home. So like, don't you tell know, me you'd be fucking his knee. No, but <laughs> okay. you know how like when you with somebody, you already know if you want it to be long sex, it can, but it yep. could also be very short. Yep. Yep. We could fucking like five minutes. Yep. So now. I think he'd just be ready to come and go to bed. So, like, before we're about to fuck, he'll go down on me, and I'll get on top of him. And then he kind of just lets me sit on his chest for a little bit while we make out or, like, on his stomach. 
and I can come like that, bitch. Rubbing on the, like just as long as my clit feels a little bit of dick, it's like a tease, and it's kind of hot. Is that weird? Okay, no, that's not yeah. weird. That makes sense. It's not a statue, but I mean, right. it's a it's a non dick option. And ain't your bed or a stuffed doll. So okay, so, so on the documentary, you said people like had arousals from their cars through different objects and yeah. statues. Well, the statue one, the one I saw. I don't know if you saw this one where the guy was in love with a doll. Um. It was a live doll. They paid like a thousand dollars. No, but no, 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 not a thousand. Probably way more. They're very heavy. He would and like. And he puts it on. I didn't see that one. Oh no, I'm talking about one where like they they put on these outfits. They spend mad money for it, and it's like a doll. Literally, like they they put it on, and it looks like a real life walking doll, and that's their thing. Like oh. that, I just see people that are partners with dolls. Oh. And I heard a guy be like, "I don't want to go out in the real world and just you know meet people and have to deal with them." Now, these dolls I've actually seen in the Museum of Sex. I think it's on 23rd and 5th. And their eyes move, and, like, the mouth is, like, softer. They, I think one of the dolls in there is $20,000. That's insane. The skin feels real. He changes her clothes. He's like, oh, she likes to wear pink and blah, blah, blah. So I, so I guess for the listeners, I do want you guys to know that this is not the same as a blow-up doll or sex right. toys or anything like that. This is really an asphyxiation with statues yeah. and There's and porn objects. of people fucking um, dolls. Really? What? Yeah. What, Damn. blow up dolls? Not even blow up dolls, man. Like okay. those real living... Guys, guys that are listening, I'm going to find these porns for you. And since Twitter allows pretty much fucking everything, <laughs> yeah. I heard, I'm Twitter, post I heard it. Twitter was blocking out titties. Nah, I ain't blocking out shit. Okay, okay. I'll be nah. on the goddamn subway <laughs> with dicks all on my yep. timeline scrolling fast as fuck. Like, oh my God, I hope no one is looking at my phone. Because it's mad dicks, bro. I ain't going to lie. Dicks. I just turn on the light. Mad dicks. Oh, that's what I do. I turn yeah. on the light. Because I'm a hoe all day, every day. I don't know who this is. Okay. It's a bill collector. So, <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, I guess that's, questions, that's kind right? of that. We're going to get into our questions, but I'm not even going to lie. I said my disclaimer. I'm going to let Weezy start off nice. <laughs> yeah. <first laughs> until question. I get into the questions that are probably on everybody's motherfucking mind. Right, um, go. So go ahead and say the, 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 the questions to get this started. On. But I want to know, um, how do you describe yourself? Are you a, you're a straight transgender man? Are you, cause like people don't know. So yeah. Um, I, describe myself i guess as a black straight man um i guess for the sake of politics and being politically correct i have to throw in trans <clears throat> right um, okay for a long time i didn't and that was because i didn't want to be identified as a tra- i didn't want to i didn't want to be put into an, yet another box well, in society have to. i don't have to however and a lot of people... in terms of raising awareness i feel like I have that's that's the selfless part of me. I have to because there's so many other little boys and girls that feel the same way that I did as a child and didn't have an adult to identify with or an adult to to have these kinds of discussions with. Didn't have anyone around them that was raising awareness in regards to what it's like to be trans and the trials and tribulations of being a young black or brown or person of color. Do you right. know what I mean? That identifies as trans. So I feel like it's very important for me now as an adult to be the adult that I needed as a child. Right. So you said that no one, um, like a lot of people are listening or, and young adults don't understand what it's like to go through this. So can you explain how it was that you felt as a child? Well, what so age you were born, did you know? Yeah, you were born a female, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. What was it like growing and how did you deal with the trans? How? Yeah, what prompted you to transition? And So... I'm going to start with your question first, which was age. Age, yes. I was eight years old when I was first attracted to another female. So not even when you knew you were the wrong gender? No, no. I had no okay. idea at that point. All okay. that I knew was that the boys and girls was playing kiss chase in the playground and I weren't on being kissed or chased by no guy. We're fighting, fam. Like, we ain't, we ain't <laughs> on like that. What do you mean? You know what I mean? But I knew that I was attracted to a female. And okay. for me, it was like I couldn't comprehend it because I grew up in a... In a, in a home where my mom was with my stepdad at the time, had been for years, and my older brother, who's six years older than me, had only ever been with females. Right. With females in another, ho- in another house, <laughs> yeah, saying, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I know right. what's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had never seen any interaction between any anyone else other than heterosexual, heterosexual. males and females. So What city did you grow up in? London. Okay. Okay. Now... I felt like London was progressive, was it not? How old are you, by the way? 26, going to be okay. 27. Okay, good to know. Um, so at that time, London is very progressive. London is very similar to New York in, in various senses. Right. Um, it's very diverse, and yes, it is very pro- progressive. Um, 
However, back in those days, in the nineties, there yeah. wasn't. There I agree. W- like, look, at, look even at, look here now in the in the states, the same. Right. Even in the nineties, we're just mm, now progressing right. to where we can even have this conversation without exactly, people saying, exactly. "Ew, gross." Oh my god, what's and going there's on? There's still gonna be some that do say, "Possibly, gross. yeah." <laughs> and it is where it is, and this is where this com- com- conversations like this are very important to be had. Absolutely. Um, but but then and and also it depends on what area you grow up in. I'm sure you guys are aware of this in New York. If you grow up in a certain area in New York, there's certain things that you're going to be exposed to, um, and there's certain things that you're you're definitely not going to be exposed to. Do you right. know what I mean? And that was very much so how it was where I was living. I grew up in a a hood, essentially speaking, and what I was aware of and what I was exposed to um, wasn't anything <coughs> close to the LGBTQ community. Okay. Um, in fact, in terms of my friends at that moment in time, you know, if we'd even see anything like that, and even me, like, I was a part, I was a product of my environment. If we'd see anything like a gay male, it was like, oh, you're a batty boy. And, batty you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm from the Caribbean also. My family's from the Caribbean. So that was a big influence, even down to the music. Bashment, a lot of Bashment is mm-hmm. like, bon, batty man, bon, chichi man. Oh, so bye, much bye, no, batty you boy. You know what I'm saying? Hey. So, uh, you know I know. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. That's so- interesting because I'm like super curious because you mentioned actually off the mic that you just said you were from the hood and you were like, you know, this is not only culture but race and race, right, race right. influences culture. You think the black community? I think that the black community is in this um, unfortunate bubble. Bu- exactly that. <laughs> Took the word right out of my mouth in this bubble where they have this um, false concept that. It doesn't exist that the LGBTQ community does not exist in the black community, the, right? And it's like, no, like, first and foremost, for all of those guys out there that are screaming Black Lives Matter, y'all need to understand that Black Lives Matter was created by queer and gay folks that identify with the LGBTQ community, right? You know what I'm saying? So, you can't be out here screaming <clears throat> Black Lives Matter but not accepting the fact that all Black Lives Matter, and it, it that doesn't matter how you identify. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter whether you're part of the LGBTQ community or not. You are st- you're, you're screaming that you're a part of this movement and that you want to raise awareness for this movement and you want justice for this movement, but yet you're not accepting everyone in the whole entity. Do you know what I mean? Do you think like, that's a masculinity ex- issue? Like when talking about toxic masculinity, mm-hmm. do you think that the black community has a masculinity issue and it's like, I don't know. I think that's a that's a that plays a huge part, but on a bigger scale, I think it's about awareness. Now, you look at the media. The media plays a big part in what we understand and what we're exposed to. If you only ever see white folks... Actually, my, one of my questions is for you is how do you feel about Caitlyn? I mean... As a, as a white trans man... Well, trans, that, that would be a trans, trans woman. Trans, trans, woman, trans yes. woman, correct? So going from a male to a female would be considered a trans woman Mm -hmm. how do you feel about the i guess the attention that she's gotten not even that but she's like the face well we know she's not people that's i feel like anybody that's down (laughs) knows she's not but and that goes back to the racial this conversation and part of things because when you check it at the end of the day everyone has everyone gets to a point in life where they they find themselves right. and it doesn't age is not a factor in this we can't the, the people are looking at it like oh but she she's had kids and been married and and you know she was living her life as a man for so long what made her do it now that's that's not right. that's neither here nor there i, I agree with you on that one a lot of people think that it's bullshit i didn't i think it's real it's real you find like Everyone has the, their points in their life where you find yourself. Absolutely. And age age isn't a factor in that. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. you find your authentic self and you want to live your authentic truth whenever you feel ready to do so. Whether that means that now society has become more progressive and open the door for you to be able to do so. Whether you're, you're more accepting of yourself, you've done more research, whatever it may be. That's right. an even, like, for me, age isn't a factor. The, the, the problem I have is that She's not the first trans woman, right? Ever, right. Ever, right? <laughs> In fact, like, there are other trans women of color out there that have been out there that have been advocating hard right. for, for, for trans folks of color Shit, that have Laverne. never had I mean, yeah. Janet Mock. <laughs> Janet I mean? Mock is bomb. Charlemagne right. was saying, like, I can't tell you this is not a beautiful woman. When I was listening yeah. to this podcast, he's like, I can't tell you. I like. Can't. There's been people that's been doing it, so it's it's just for me. It's just like now you've got this white woman of you know that's got Privileged. somewhat. Well, we know that that's standard. White, <laughs> right? White. Uh, <laughs> that, I guess you're right. Ma- right. Man Super. or woman, as long as you white, you got that. And you know, people have to you know learn to understand that. And um, 
But anyway, that's a whole different conversation. But um, you've now got this white woman that's come from money. Okay. That holds some form of power in a social, um, in a, in a social like economic s- situation. Do you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, the media is just focused on on her. And that's cool. Don't get me wrong, because you're living your truth, and you know what I mean. Like you've got the platform to somewhat be an advocate for it. But that to me belittles every other woman of color that's been out here doing this. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And that's still not to today getting the recognition that they should be getting. Right. And and that goes back to the media and propaganda feeding us what not they even want that. us Every to see. A Republican wanted that. <laughs> right. Well, I, I really enjoy that we're even discussing the, the progression that we have been made. But what I really want to do is get back to your story. Mm-hmm. So at eight, you realized you liked women. Yes. At What was the next phase um, that you feel like that you went through through your transition? So at, you realized... I'm different. I don't like the opposite sex. Right. What was the next phase? The next phase for me was puby. Pubes. Hitting puberty. Okay. Yes. Pubes. I mean, they did the accent. Puberty. Puberty. I was like pubes. Okay. Puberty. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. So puberty hit you. Okay. Puberty hit me, and it was like, oh my gosh, like this is not my body anymore do you know what i mean like for a long time for me gender and sex because sex and gender are two completely different things do you mind i'm sorry to segue but i do want people to understand that sexual orientation and gender identity so sexual orientation is one thing completely sexual orientation is is who you're attracted to right what you're attracted to Gender identity. Gender identity is is a mental thing. It's whether you are. It's, it's how you identify in in social circles. So whether you identify as a man, I like that. Or so woman, in social circles. Okay. Right? In society, right? And then and then sex is in terms of anatomy. And that's so, what makes you a straight man. It's, no. Okay. Because you identified yourself that way. Yes, but look. Oh, great. Sex is anatomy. Check me. So you was born. You was born a male or, or female. female. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's sex. Gender is man and woman. Ah. Uh huh. So sex, like gender, sexuality. <laughs> I woke you up. Wait, so you have, what? Male, so female. So yes. you have sex, gender, sexuality. This so must sex, be why people went in on us for saying that women are female. Probably. Yeah. This is that conversation that we had with Sam White, where everyone was like, "How can y'all know know, know the difference?" Bitch, excuse me. So let me break this down Mm -hmm. for our listeners because you did a great job. So sex is male or female. Right. Gender is man or woman. Correct. And then sexuality is what you're attracted, is attraction. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So good to know. Yeah, because we clearly was like, nigga, female, woman, what you talking about? Like, (laughs) we was not not trying to hear the same. I'm like, but you still call a female. (laughs) Like, you ain't calling a female. We really didn't understand. Okay, so... At, during puberty is when you realized you were identifying, you wanted to identify with another gender. Right. You didn't like that your voice was changed. Uh, well, no. Look, I'm looking at you like a man. I'm like, your voice was changing. No, you're a female. <laughs> so you ain't like that you started bleeding out your vagina, basically. I ain't like, like, <laughs> I ain't like none of that. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Like, puberty was definitely the realization for me. And that came at a young age. That came out about 11, 12. Yep. Um, so for me, I was still at that point. My sexual orientation was still women being okay. attracted to females. Um, but my gender did not align with my with my sex with what you were looking right like. exactly i okay. have a question like uh so and don't take this the wrong way it's because it's why i wanted you on here so badly right. i sent your picture to some friends i was like i'm so excited and they're like what <laughs> no fucking way i was curious to know have you always had that look had you always had you been androgynous because like so I've a always... lot of people don't transition this eat like you look like right. a straight nigga to me I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just saying, no offense, I told y'all, I don't want to offend like, nobody, right, but, but I would have never think. guessed. And people no. will say these things like, but you look like a guy. Right, right, like, right. And for, yes, I have always looked this way. Um, in terms of like facial hair and stuff like that, yeah, of course, like hormone, hormone. Treatment. Oh, we gonna get into that because yeah, I want to know how the hell you got a beard right now. But you've always it's, had it's, your face. It's no, yeah. no shave November. You know okay, I go. No, no, um, right. Okay, and so but, during back back to the puberty mm-hmm. standpoint, so you started getting titties. Yeah. At this point, were you hiding your breast? Were you hiding the parts that automatically come with with being a woman? Yeah, and and at this point, I was hiding that part of my identity. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And and also <clears throat> because I've always looked this way and presented this way, w- females was automatically would automatically assume that I was a guy. 
Oh. They didn't question whether I was a girl because right. you had you know, your hair cut, you would dress then, a certain way. I had cane rolls, but back then, you know, you're young. Um, so, you know, um, having a deep voice and, and, and having facial hair wasn't the thing. You're, I'm young at that stage. You, know you were I mean? like Lil Bow Wow. So, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he said corn rolls. <laughs> I'm imagining Lil Bow Wow right now because Bow Wow was cute. I mean, I don't know. and you I'm, know they I'm, all say he look like little mama. I, I get it though because no so, <laughs> it's like you fluctuate. What did your family think? Because I feel like people, the scariest thing to do is come out to your friends and family. Like, were they supportive? Yeah, it took me a very long time to come out to my to my family. To be honest, and my and my friends. Like, but they, I, did, they I had started, to have known if you were dressed yeah, this way. And... Like, my mom. One thing that I, I I'm never gonna forget. My mom wishes I would, but I can't. Aww. It's stuck with me because from a very young age, you know, your mom. Buys your clothes. You don't really get much of a choice. So well, I don't know about anyone else. Nope, absolutely. Then, we ain't I, got no job. Exactly. Yep. I didn't really get much of a choice. But my mom would always kind of let me choose one or two things. And I'd choose like a tracksuit, a pair of kicks, <laughs> the baggiest jeans or something. You know what I mean? And I'd wear that like all the time. And my mom would be like, why are you wearing that? Wear something else. You know what I mean? And this is this is like um, under the age of 10. You know what I mean? And I'd just be like, oh, I'm going out to play. I feel comfortable. Under and I was, the age I was, of 10. Wow. wow. I was very active. Like right. I was, I was, I, I participated in a lot of sports. Um, I was always out playing with my guys. You know what I'm saying? So, like in that sense, I was. That was my excuse. Oh, I'm going out to play football. I'm going out to play basketball. So I can't be wearing, you know, the tight dresses jeans that you or, got me, or yeah. the dresses and the skirts. You know what I mean? But for a long time, my mom used to say to me, like, you know, do you want me to get your sex change? It's like you want me to, you know, it's like you you got me working out here to um, save out all my money to to um, pay for a sex change for you. And at that age, I didn't even know what that meant. What that meant? If I had, I would have went to my mom and been like, Yes, that's what I want. Actually, yeah, absolutely, please tomorrow. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> let's do this. Get me out of this body. You know okay, I mean? and so now you've hit puberty, mm-hmm. high school. High school is where I feel like a lot of us um, find judging. ourselves. Yes. Not only judging, we're now, yeah, we're going into adulthood and right. we're starting to have sex. Right. Um, bitch, we was early, like night <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> but so transition into high school, were you picked on? Were you, like, did people understand where you were coming from? So, and, and also at this point, we were looking at pictures on your Instagram mm-hmm. and I made the reference, again, shoot me if I'm wrong, you looked like a stud. Right. Um, and so we accept studs, I feel like with no problem. Right. So is that how you identified in high school and then transitioned past that or explain that for us? So disclaimer to anyone that might be listening (laughs) for a long period of time, I lied to females. Oh, oh, this is good. Cause we're going to ask this question from the age of about 14 to at least 16, I would say. I or thirteen actually because I was definitely fucking around. Oh, anyway, thirteen! Okay, <laughs> you beat us from, from thirteen to, you, the, to about to, sixteen. Yeah. I was, you know, they would assume, and I, I wouldn't correct them. Do you know what I mean? And and after some long like thinking about my life and and how things panned out and my transition thus far, I've got to the realization that. I feel like that part of me, that part of me that was that was lying to females and and had this like this this kind of like point of deception, I would say. Do you know what Absolutely. I mean? Like I feel like that was me creating an alter ego to al- allow me to be free to identify as who I knew I was, but I was stuck in the social, like in the social struggle of identifying with what is socially normal. Do you know what I mean? Right. And and. So in saying that, I just want to put it out there. I don't, for any young person that's listening, whether you identify as trans or whether you're trying to find yourself, um, I would never want you to do that because the, the backlash that you see, like the, the hardship that you see the female on the other end go through. Ooh. Is, is And we were just talking about that. So I assume at this point you was just so, eating a whole bunch of pussy. Nah. Because, well, nah, they weren't. I weren't, you know, I was fingering still. <laughs> oh, you were, you were eating, but at this point there wasn't there, there couldn't have been a penetration no nah, there wasn't right and so we talked about this on an episode with um james which is one of Weezy's really close friends mm-hmm. so james Go is ahead. super liberal fuck you trans people don't have to tell you shit right. blah 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 so mandy and james got into it because he's like they don't owe you anything mm-hmm. they don't have to tell you about their genitals mandy's like but i still deserve that so Coming back and to that's Lil what Duvall, you just said, and even said what Duvall, he said yeah. about killing somebody. I wanted to know from you specifically, do you feel like it needs to be discussed? When it does, how soon? It basically, yeah. is it your right or theirs? 
because yeah. you also have the right to be private on that. So that's kind of where our questions are. Like, how soon? A first date? When they get your number? When they holler at you? So I don't feel like I need to disclose <clears throat> to anyone upon meeting that I'm trans. I don't feel oh. like I owe that to you. Okay. Um, I for agree. For various reasons, because... I disagree, but... Cool, we can get okay. into that, but I, I, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> okay, keep going. No, um, absolutely, I want to um, hear this. I don't feel like, you know, at the end of the day, that's 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 a part of me, and I feel as though there's various things, not just uh, transition centered, but there's various things in people's lives that they don't reveal upon meeting a person. Why? Because where's this going? Do I know that it's going anywhere? Why am I gonna reveal that some of the James's deepest? Point. Why am I gonna reveal some of the deepest parts of me? that are so sacred to me, to you, and I don't even know where this is going. This this may not be going anywhere. Why am I investing so much into you when I don't know how much you got invested in me? I don't even know if I want to be that invested in you yet. You know what I mean? And I just feel like this notion, this forced notion that trans people have to declare it. No, they do not. They do not have to declare anything upon meeting someone, upon a first date with someone. Okay. What about however, second date? Second however, date? What I will say is it is important to have these kinds of discussions prior to intercourse. Oh, of course. That is my standpoint on it. Okay. And I I say that because, as I said, the, the, the hardship that you see females go through after finding out maybe... And this sense of you took something from me. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like Which is how, how right. I would feel. You yeah. took a part of me that perhaps I wasn't ready to give you. I didn't want to give you. And it's, it's, it's that deception. Do you right. know what I mean? And I feel like it's important before you, you're you intimate with someone on that level, you give them the option to say whether this is what they want. Right. You know what I mean? And a lot of trans folk might be listening and, be, and, and feel like, I'm not really rooting for the team kind of thing because, you know, at the same time, there's a lot of trans folks, and we have to discuss this, there's a lot of trans folks predominantly of colour that are being murdered uh, pretty much every week in the United States of America. I'm glad that you, I really like your perspective because that was the one I had. I would want someone to tell me before sex, but I don't feel like they owe me that. No. Right. If I feel like I'm going on a date with a man, I am. Right. I mean, the only thing that I think, and it's just like if you had, I hate comparing it to this, but... Something to tell during sex is if you've got an STD, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't need to know that when I meet you or at dinner. And we It's crazy because we had um, Ella, who has herpes, and she came out openly and was like, she, a couple guys who she has met on the first time, she's like, hey, I have herpes. I'm known as the herpes girl. I, you know. Well, she's got TED Talks about it. She has TED Talks about okay. it. Yeah, but that yeah, was something. I, see, I think that's different. Like, oh, how's the calamari? Good. Um, <laughs> and the herpes pussy I got down here. See, I, I don't know. To me, that's something that's private. Like, just about, like, just like living with HIV, which part of being in the LGBT community, this right. this happens and I know about it. No, you don't need to tell someone when you meet them your status in that way because you haven't fucked them yet and right. you don't know if you want to. And right. it's something that's so revealing and private. I think that a lot more people on the other sh- side should be sensitive to that. If you had a first date. And see, to me, I'll sit here and break it down this way. I feel like the same way with with progress, we're learning to be sensitive to, you know, you, your mm-hmm. transition, mm-hmm. Wh- how you identify. Right. I feel like as a trans man, trans woman, mm-hmm. you also need to be sensitive to the heterosexuals who, A, are not fully comfortable with with w- what you're going through. Mm-hmm. They don't understand. They don't know how to respond to it. And with the hyper-masculinity in men, women is a little different. I feel like it may be easier for you. But on the other end of the spectrum... Men have a different idea. We had a, a engineer in here before, mm-hmm. and that was his very first question. What? Like, um, when, well, when when do they tell me that he was a nigga at right, one point? Right. And this is, again, from a trans oh. woman, right, right, right. but it's just like for straight people, I feel like you need to have the respect and be just as sensitive to kind of but letting when, them when, know when what they're doing. What would be your ideal situation? He just said when meeting somebody, which if you do you at least agree with a that? Date. We're, we're sitting getting here. someone's number in the club. Do you agree with that part? He doesn't have to tell. No, you can. Yeah. Getting someone's number. You I don't just want to know tell. what you're comfortable but with. I'm comfortable with at the end of date one. If we're going on a second date, that means you're progressing. How do I know that? 
to me oh as a female like my nigga we're not going on another date if i don't want to see you and men kind of the same way if they're not really digging a female they're not going to see them you again. need him to tell you that like but, you're talking about at the, the end, end of, of first at, date? at the end of first date if we some or not the exact date before if, if we're on the phone planning a second date mm-hmm. to me that's progress to me we're going in a direction to see each other more than once that's where i draw the line to where okay i see us now moving forward one date okay we're meeting at the end of day one if we plan to see each other again that's when i feel like you should let me know because as a as a straight person well i'm not even straight i like pussy and dick, <laughs> I like pussy and dick but i'm talking for my straight people um, and for, as someone who would be straight and may not go both ways or like both you know i think that that's when you should let them know listen i'm this i've transitioned to this i'd like to see you again what was your? What were you gonna say when you saw, when she was saying that? Because you looked at your hand. Because then you look like, like I was like, yeah. What do you not feel like the end of first date? Do you think that's nah, too soon? I feel like it's a. I feel like it's when that person is comfortable enough to tell you. Well, that's some bullshit. Real shit. Like, I, that's, yeah, that's, that's, I, that's, that's, I, I feel though. like I feel like that that person should have the space and time to. And that's just right before. What if you were missing a titty? Huh? Wait, 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 what? what? First of all, this is something that you're not going to find out until you see me naked. Right. This is something that you're not going to know about me until, and it's something that's like a part of the sexual being that you could be attracted to or maybe not want to sleep with me for. When would you tell somebody you were missing a titty? <laughs> <laughs> You're sick. You you really are sick because who thinks of this shit? Because I'm trying to think of something that could happen. If I have one happen. titty, what I'm going to ask maybe on the first date as a joke, you a titty man? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> because if he's an ass man, he might not give a fuck about my one titty. So a trans should be like, but I wouldn't give a fuck. I, 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 and I maybe you don't fuck. But it's, I, I know I wouldn't care and I know you wouldn't. Now, I have never been attracted to studs because to me, they still have that girly look. I do and but, they hate that I'm bisexual. Brittany Griner, if but you But if listen. I met someone fully transitioned and, and they told me on the date three or four, I might be like, I mean, I know you're going to strap up, so what the fuck do I care? <laughs> you're fine with them strapping up because you like well, both, you like whatever, right, 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 bitch. You right. be you, fucking everybody. So, but, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> my question, no, but what I was going to say, no, you got to strap. You sleep with men. You sleep with women. Yes. yes. I am shocked that you are telling me if someone you liked by date three, like what kind of reaction do you me. think you'd have? But that's me. However, I'm saying this because you're friends with a lot of members of the LGBTQ community. That's a lot of letters too. You, you're, you're. That's what your friends are. I'm friends with a lot of people who aren't okay. You know, I'm friends with a lot of black people. Okay. What I'm you friends, trying to say? I'm friends with niggas, and my friends. <laughs> A lot of them don't swing both ways. A lot of them would never peg their man. A lot of men that I'm around are like, get that gay shit from around me. So they are the the little Duvals. Those are a lot of my friends. So when I'm speaking, I'm speaking for them. Um, of course, I like men and women, and I identify as bisexual. But I'm speaking from them because... Not them. Well, I'm talking about you. Right, but I'm speaking... Bitch, both of us can't speak up for them. I want to speak up for my friends <laughs> that when I have these conversations with them, they say the shit like du- Lil Duval said. If I was on a date and the female was a nigga, I'd fucking kill him. Like, mm-hmm. And that shit like that, those are my type of friends. So that's why when I come to you and I ask these questions and I say after date mm-hmm. one, I'm speaking for, for a lot of people who aren't comfortable with this conversation. So I've been on dates with guys that I've asked if it's ever happened to them on Tinder. And two men I've been out with, Google guy who I went to sex club with, he was like, I went on a date towards the end of the date, she told me. And he said the only kind of clue he had was that she was like 5'11". Which, <laughs> but he said, but still, it's New York, so that means right, nothing. Right, right. There's, There's models <laughs> everywhere. Um, and I said, how'd you take it? And he was like, honestly, I said, he was like, a part of me instantly got mad that I didn't know before. But then I thought, why? She couldn't tell me then he's like what the fuck is she gonna do just be like oh by the way on your way that like he's like she i thought she did it in the right time okay so that's cool and you leave somebody that choice now has any woman ever told you no after you came out to them that's a good question no damn your tongue game must be lit no, no i don't even think i th- see no, you know i what, told but, but you see, it's but, not about the tongue game it's about the backstroke okay oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but, but that, so you're very very you're a handsome man thank you um and so i want to get into that because okay you're saying that no one's ever turned you down for being a woman but go but, ahead but listen to this so i'm listening in terms of me in terms of me so i've only had um three serious relationships including my marriage to date okay, okay? um prior to that i had been with with females who perhaps i didn't tell them straight up do you okay. know what i mean um and there was how'd you get around that strap Fingers up lights bit. off uh 
No Lay one ever knew from a strap. Layers on. You know what? You I've had heard a real people good say that. Strap. No, but people say that. They're like, what does that mean? Let no me, oral? Let me tell you something real funny, though. <laughs> It ain't funny, it ain't funny. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely wasn't funny at the time. So I was with, I was, I was, I was dating, I was young, I was 16, I was dating a, a, a female. Okay. And she didn't know. Okay. And we was together nine months in total. Whoa. Hold up, wait for it. Ooh. About three months in, she found out. How did she find out? Well, there was other people, there was people in the area that knew me, obviously went to school with me. And word got out. And you know how it goes, word is the fastest way to spread news. Right. So... She was questioning me, and I was like, nah, 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 nah. I don't know what you're talking about. They're trying shit. Hey, let me phone them. Let me phone them. You know, you get aggy, make it seem uh, realistic. Niggas lying. You had it down pat. So she's like, all right, all right, cool, babe. So we had never done this oral thing, right? Remember, 16, I mean, she ain't never gone down on me. I ain't never gone down on her. So cool. It's all good. And then out of nowhere, like, she was like, let me give you head. So oh. me, I'm spitting bars now. I'm like, nah, nah, you're my I'm not wife. Do that to you. You're my wife, man. <laughs> you, you don't need to do all of that. You get me? I got respect. For you know all that shit. <laughs> Two twos. We went out one night, got drunk, went back to her grand's house. I hope she ain't listening. What did you catching. say? Two twos? Yeah, like what's that? Taco mean? Tuesday? Nah, nah. Oh. nah. <laughs> no, <it's like> a- <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like a transition she said word. Twos like, like drunk. <laughs> I thought Taco Tuesday. Like, like. like like two, like I don't even know how to translate that out here. Like two twos, like right, anyway. next thing next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. I was trying I to. Was I thought it was Tuesday. Nah, you know, it's, it's Wednesday. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we went back to her grand's house and um, and we're chilling or whatever. And she's like, "Yo, I want to give you head." And obviously back then, because I knew that I, because I was with her and she didn't know, I was always strapped. Like, I, I never, I would never go out in public and not have my strap on because I was prepared. Like, shit, me, we might get down right here. You know what I mean? I gotta be ready. So she was like, right, let me suck your dick. And I was yak. So I was like, you know what? Oh, God. Fuck it. That's so exciting. Turn off the lights. She's she doing, was sucking plastic? She's doing her thing. No. Obviously, I'm like, uh, uh, you know what I mean? All the noise effects. I'm like, all right, cool. Must be about time to bust now. You know what I mean? So I'm like, uh, yeah, done my thing. She got up, she was like, she turned on the light, she's like, do you think I'm a fucking dickhead? <laughs> Knowing the alcohol just, it just left my system. I was, like, I was like, what? She was like, do you think I don't know? Do you think I haven't known? Do you think I'd ever suck your fucking dick? I was like, oh shit. Wake up fam, quick. Wake up, get with it. So Wait, so she knew the whole time? She, she was basically saying that she had known for a minute. And she wanted to just... And she wanted to rock with me. Her, her, her um, explanation was my sex was good. Oh. So she was with it. But right. for me, it was kind of like, how do we progress from here? Do you know what I mean? Right. And, and she was the first female that, even though she, we stayed together after that point, we were together nine months in total, and she, she found out, well, she let me know she knew at the three-month mark, roughly. Um, but even up to today, she's kind of like, she feels like I, bet- I betrayed her. Do you know what I mean? And I made right. her question her sexuality. Well, you were young. Up until now. Yeah. And that's crazy because that was going to be my next question to you. You've been in three serious relationships. One being your wife now. Yeah. Do they identify as lesbians? No. Like, do, but as they, in my wife or, or as in the, as in the, the, the women that you dealt with? Because even though you identify as a male, mm-hmm. you still have female parts. So do they do do they like women or do they like men? Like, how do the people that you deal with identify as? So the two previous partners that I've been with, they one of them doesn't identify as a lesbian. Um, in fact, she she we had been friends for three years prior to getting together, and okay. um, and she was basically like it was me. She fell for me as a as a person. It okay. wasn't about you know male or female, man or woman. It was the fact that she she was attracted to me as a person, and we went from there. But then when it came down to me telling her that I was. I wasn't happy and content as as a female, you know. That's kind of when things started going left. She wasn't really down for this, tr- for being with a trans. trans. Okay. Um, although she wasn't really down for also letting her friends and family too much know that um, she was also with. Because at that moment in time, I was identifying as a stud. I was in the social circle, uh, and not so. I was I was trying to label myself as what society accepted at that moment accepted, in time, which is stud, which, which was, is what which I said earlier, right? At that time, because I was. 18 at that point so you know we're still talking about a few years ago when you know progression wasn't quite where it was now <laughs> right, right. Um, so 
uh, and then the female before, uh, after that, sorry, um, I was with for four years and she did identify as a lesbian. And again, the same thing, but, but, you know, when it came down to using pronouns and stuff, she was good with that because I pretty much told her from the off, but at the same time when it came when when shit hit the fan and it was really time for me to start transitioning she wasn't really down with it she couldn't really understand it she, she did. wow that is so, so that's interesting yeah, yeah because she's like no for you i'm curious because i have I had a friend that was a trans male and he talked about not enjoying women wanting to lick his pussy he's mm-hmm. like i don't like that i don't like people talking to me like that like right so to, for her to say a lesbian did you not enjoy because that's the part that she liked about it it seems like especially if she didn't like that you were transitioning so because there's no more girl in there <laughs> well, we can see right <laughs> so, no more so, lady. so i can understand how she was attracted to it like that's it's almost gone so in terms of like how she identified um that was a problem for me because her associ- her, her identifying as a lesbian of meant course, that you... right. W- w- meant that she was with a woman, and and that wasn't me. Do you know that what I mean? Like you, right? I was, I felt trapped in in the in the body that I had. Um, I felt like nature did a disjustice to me, um, and I wasn't comfortable with that at all. Um, and in terms of like sexual, <coughs> like sexual interaction and stuff, there was like back then as a stud, I guess I would be classed as a touch me not. Um, Got in ter- it. Right. Got in terms you. of, yeah. in terms so that was of what like, my friend was. Yeah. So in terms of like, you know, I can strap her up, I can do all that, but you ain't gonna touch me. There's there's none of that rabbit play. You know what I mean? There's none of that. What's rabbit play? You know Just what so I mean? I'm... Dildos and all that kind of stuff. You ain't gonna be doing all of that on me. You know what I'm saying? So I was very much so a touch me not. I have a um, question about that. So how do you get pleasure? Because I've worn a strap on before, and I mean. I get, I might get wet, but it doesn't make me come. It, it doesn't really please me more as it does, you know, mentally I'm stimulated, right. but it doesn't really please me. So if you're a touch me not, or you're, you know, how do you become, how do you get pleasured? I get you my, just don't. That is, that is my pleasure. That's your pleasure. Yeah. Like, but you, but like yeah, I think that's a misconception I, I, for a lot of people. Yeah, it is. We don't because we get it another way. Right. I like and, penetration. And got, exactly. I mean, I really like penetration. But there's a lot of tops that don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. You know, okay. they don't need to be penetrated. Tops don't. I mean, we take like gay men, like tops don't need it at all. Yeah, but, but tops feel the pleasure of going in a pussy. When you have a strap on, you don't feel the pleasure of going inside of the pussy. Right. But as so you said, it's a men- you get the mental stimulation. Okay. And and I guess in that sense that's what gives you the, that that stimulation in other ways, you know what I mean? Like for, from time you, for me it's like a lot of people say, "Oh, um I, I'm 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 aroused by the intelligence of another being, right? right. Like a lot of people are like that. Like, they're like um sexual sexual right? sexual, yeah. Um and that is how they they're turned on by by feeding off of someone else's knowledge um, and, mind, yeah. and mind, right? And a lot of people find that weird, but that's that's a mental thing. It's a mental stimulation which stimulates them in other ways. Okay. Um and for me it's very much so because I do not identify as a female. I do not want any association to that. Do you know ah, what I mean? Okay. So for me, like penetrating my my wife, or you know, back in the day, penetrating any woman with with my strap was enough for me, and it still is enough for me. Okay, right. Okay, and so I want to talk now briefly because we're running out of time, unfortunately. Oh man, I gotta um, come back. I know, but I do <laughs> want to ask you now, um, as an adult, the transition. My name. I'm, I'm not like my nigga. You look like a straight man. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to talk about like you have facial hair. Mm-hmm. Your voice is rather deep. Mm-hmm. Um, I know my mama got a deep voice, but not <laughs> like this. Um, so what what is it like to transition? What have you gone through? What 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 do you have to take? People, you know, that don't understand how this works. I would love for you to break you down. Like exactly. the, I think you're one of like you're like the epitome uh, of of a, a trans of a son that's ready to transition. Like so, yeah, like the beard you have, the voice. What have you had to do to undergo this transition physically? So, um, in terms of the physical journey that I've, that I've you know, endured this thus far, it's, um, in terms of like facial features and well, not not so much facial features because my face hasn't really changed. You know what I mean? Like in that sense, but in terms of like um, growing hair and the voice deepening or dropping um, and weight shift because right? these these are yeah some because of the you have muscles. I mean, right, your arms look real like I've been pretty. You ain't got I've been hips. pretty much like this. <laughs> You've always been. Like yeah, but okay, like, small. To be honest, like before I transit, like when I when I started my journey, I'm gonna ask you a question first. All right, cool. okay. So it starts. It it, it goes like. You, you have to go and see a therapist first or a psychologist first. 
Um, and then once you do that, they oh, this is in shit. England at least, and then they will refer you to something called the Gender Identity Clinic. Once they referred you to the Gender, gender Identity Clinic, you then have to see another psychologist in, in that centre. Uh, once you've done that, then they will assess whether you're ready to start your hormone therapy. Hormone okay. therapy, f- um, as in um, physically, is um, <clears throat> something called testosterone. We're all aware of it. And then for the trans women, they're taking estrogen. They'll, they'll take estrogen pills, I believe. But okay. I can't speak too heavily on that just because I'm... I'm You're not. I don't but for trans yes. men, you take you testosterone. Take, yes. It doesn't necessarily have to be shot straight away. It might be a gel form. Okay. Um, a pill. No. There's no pill for testosterone. Oh. It might be a gel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, what's a gel? Oh, you um, rub it. So you rub it in yeah. certain places on the body. Oh. And that, that seeps into the into the bloodstream, um... The same way. I've seen those packets. But it's not, this old guy. they're not as effective um, oh, as, not. as the shots because the shots uh, enter your muscle, and obviously, the muscle is the quick, fastest way to, to get it through the body. Um, do they have to? Do you have to do this for, your, for the rest of your life? Yes. Okay. Okay. Of, of course, it's, it's you know. Um, I don't know if it was 10 years, 15 years. No, nah, it is for the rest of your life. However, <laughs> you know, um, there's certain things that are ir- irreversible, right? So, in terms of like my voice, hair, um, Weight shift isn't irreversible, but but there's certain things that are irreversible. So they could get for me or anyone, they could get to a point in their life where they're like, okay, I've seen as much physical changes as I could possibly get. I'm gonna stop here. But if they haven't had a hysterectomy yet, they're obviously gonna have periods after a certain right, right. That's why, yeah, that's so. Anyone, any trans male probably wouldn't stop taking testosterone um, unless they had a hysterectomy. So the testosterone doesn't stop the period, but a hysterectomy does? No. Testosterone does stop, does stop, the, does period. stop the periods. Bitch, but maybe I need to if take you, some If you stop taking the testosterone and you haven't had a hysterectomy, then you are going to have periods. Have you had a vasectomy? No. Okay. Well, but, vasectomy by the way, is just for males. Vasectomy is getting... A mastectomy. Yeah, your breast removed. Okay, must- Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mastectomy. Yes, yes. I mean, a his... Uh, Am I wrong? Is that not what it is? Okay, so, so, so a hysterectomy yes, is, is where you the get your, hymen where you removed. Get your, yes, I'm about to Google. Your, womb, really your, your womb removed. Yes. Mastectomy is getting your breast removed. Mm-hmm. And vasectomy is getting your balls removed. Correct? Vasectomy is balls, right, Preach? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but vasectomy is when you uh, eliminate your balls so that you can't... Yeah, it is. I dated dudes that have vasectomy. Yeah, okay. yeah that's, that's right. So vasectomy is cutting out. Huh? They do they ain't got no balls? No, they'd have drained them. Oh, that's so that what they it, can't get women pregnant. Yeah. Oh wait, I think I'm thinking of neutering. When you neuter an animal, that's you a cut dog. The balls. That's a dog. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> is that so, why he looks at me like with no balls? Wait, I'm but like, so vasectomy is just draining of the sperm? Cut I feel, the cord. Cut the cord. Sorry. Oh, okay, oh so they go. can't produce sperm. There you go. Oh, and then mastectomy is cutting out yes, the tissue. Yes. So have you cut out the tissue of your breast? We call it top surgery in a community, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow, this is a lot of fucking information. I'm just really happy because you don't understand. Like, <clears throat> me and Mandy have actually argued on air. <laughs> what word did you say? Uh, I think I said tranny or and trans like, yeah, or trans. Nah. So, so let's talk about so the slurs. Talk, real before quick, we um, before we go, I want to talk about yeah. What are the slurs or things that are offensive to the trans community? Down. Now she said on our um, horrible decisions. And I'm not calling you out. I'm being serious. Uh, no, 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 no. I want this. One of my friends called me and was like. Listen, I need to talk to you before you guys do this because Mandy just went on and said, we're going to have a transgender on. Is, is that... that not a... It, to me, this is my argument. I said, if we were going to have a female on, mm-hmm. a male on, mm-hmm. a escort on, goddamn, everything would be A. So I don't know how else I would have said that. Other than I guess because transgender is vague. We don't know if it's a transgender male or female. So is right. it because I didn't say trans man? Like, So explain to us what what is offensive and what is not. So I feel like the, there's certain <laughs> things that are definitely perception based, right? Right. And for you to say, sorry, what was it you said? A tra- I, said a I said, hi, we're having a transgender on the show. If you have any questions in regards to this, please send them in. Pretty much. So I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of people that probably would say that's derogatory. Um, I feel like for someone that probably hasn't been made aware of some of the the slurs, I guess, I wouldn't take offense to that. Okay. Perhaps some folks would. And as I said, that's perception, right? There's okay. certain things that people are susceptible to and there's certain things that people aren't. For me personally, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't take offense to that. Okay. If you said tranny, which, you know, certain of my cast members have said, I had to holler at them like individually really? and be like, yo, you got to take it off your, off your Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's derogatory. You might like, uh, okay. So I mean, tranny is tranny, bad. Tranny is a derogatory term. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it just undermines 
everything that we've, we, we're we going through, we've been through, like a tranny, now, like. Now, the better word I, I wanted to ask, because it's it's a real, men, men love it. I mean, when I went to Amsterdam, you got red light, blue light. Mm-hmm, for, mm-hmm. They were saying tea girls. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, especially, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but tea girls, like, told me they have enjoyed, like, I love having a dick. Like, and, you know, having tits and, right. you know, it's something they enjoy about their body and they don't want to change it. Is T girl an okay thing to say? Or what is the proper thing to say? Um, From what I'm aware, I can't speak too much on that. Okay. I don't really like to give out false information in terms of <clears throat> like what, like I like to speak on what I'm aware of rather right. than guessing right. because I don't want to be the person that um, somewhat represents the community and doesn't even no exactly. understand right exactly. and anyway, like, you know you're, you're all gonna be comfortable with different things right the person that heard it thought a transgender wasn't good enough you are understanding enough to say okay well she doesn't know right right and and that's kind of what i said and i just like even to me like i don't know the whole i had a conversation with my friend about the the stud the dyke the the things that you we can say right. stud but we can't say dyke right we could say transgender but we can't say tranny we could and it's just like I don't know all this goddamn politically correct now, bullshit. Yeah, like now, now but, Dyke. Yes. Um, in in the UK, do people use that word? And is it? I'm not gonna lie. The only time that's used is towards white women. Really? Oh. Yeah. It's not. It's not used in the black com- in the black LGBTQ community. Because we say stud. It will be stud. But I mean, or femme, but here, oh, femme, femme, or... femme. I heard. That yeah. was on the tip of my I couldn't get it out. Okay. Okay. So I think it's just. I guess it's how people receive it. Mm. As to if it's going to be offensive right. or not, except for the word, of course, tranny. Right. Right. Okay. So I guess that's good for our listeners to know. Yeah. And Because, um, I mean, I've heard that word, and I'm like, okay. okay. I got it. I, I I'm, think I'm dyke, excited. I did about... have somebody go off of me about dyke. I yeah, like me too. I've, like... I've got a lot of learning to do myself, because as I said, I feel like I said it off air. I didn't identify with... with I didn't want to be put in a, yet another box. I didn't. Right. I didn't for a long time. I didn't want to identify as a trans male. Right. You know right. And saying? we talk about labels here a lot. So yeah. There's a part of me I that honestly that. felt yeah. guilty and when not... you were saying it because I want you on so badly because I want people to get it. I want people to understand it, and most of our listeners are male. Right. Which is why this is very important to mm-hmm. me because I feel like women are going to be like, "Oh yeah, I understand," but but men don't, and right, I just want right, them right. to. But it's also, you know, you just said to me like, "I don't need to tell someone I identify as a black." straight male right. I don't need a black straight man I, I don't know I, but not only that but I then feel I do like, feel the guilt of asking you to do it because it makes you open this thing up but like, not only that I think even for our female listeners they can literally sit here and think if I was put in this position how would I respond right. Right. Um, and I think that's even good with how we talked about where you feel like you should announce um, your gender identity as far as dating yeah. um, so for different women like for me it might not bother me I like pussy I do strap ons it's all cool but for the listeners who maybe identify as straight yeah. straight 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 yeah, straight yeah. just for them to be able to listen to this episode and think how would I respond if I was put into this you yeah. know into a date where from you your know perspective where it's true it's private and sacred at the end of the day there's a lot of things in life that we are not going to be able able to understand right it's Absolutely. just impossible. And and I get that. But at the same time, like there's this common denominator, I believe, between all humans, which kind of um, allows us to, to feel able and liberated in expressing ourselves, which is just uh, room for respect. And, and at the end of the day, you not understanding a person's decisions or choices in life is okay as long as you can still respect that person for living their authentic life and, and, and being their authentic self. Um, I don't feel like any trans person or a person that identifies as trans um, owes anyone anything in terms of an explanation as to why they're transitioning. Okay. Um, but I do feel like it is important to have these kinds of conversations because tr- um, people that have identified as transgender, non-binary, queer, it's not a new wave. It's not this new thing that's just happening. Like, oh shit, there's something in the water. Oh my God, <laughs> the world's going to end tomorrow. <laughs> the devil. Like, like, yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's that's bullshit. all bullshit. Like, my godfather like, was trans. I was born in San Fran. A lot of people don't know that. My mom, um, she passed, but yeah. Um, you know, I mean, in San Francisco, gay and the LGBT community is so open. It's so open, yeah. And uh, I, maybe that's why I, I was so used to it. But I mean, I knew look that... back in history. It's documented in ancient history. Kings and queens in Egypt identified as trans and non-binary. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. This is not new. It's just that um, 
we're talking I feel like about we're it. talking about it. We're more. Some of us are more open with with um, educating others, um, right. and there is more res- resources available to educate others. Um, and I feel like media and technology plays a big part in that I'm, and mm-hmm. bringing that to the forefront. Um, but that's needless to say that, like, this isn't something new. Do you know what I mean? Like, people are like, oh, my God, the world's going to end all these transgender... G- they no! no. Like, what like, are they going to do? Legitimately. We don't let people pick out what they want to do. Oh, this is too much. It's yeah, just, no, I just absolutely just agree. And I, narrative I, that, I read like, a great headline the other day that said... Um, where are these ima- imaginary rapists coming from that people keep saying <laughs> with the bathroom? Like, there's always... I don't... Wait, like, what? Like, because what? the bathroom argument mm-hmm. of yes. is that somebody's going to go in there and rape and you. And rape you, yeah. Girl, oh, it's just like... If go, someone wants to go in the bathroom and rape you, they're going to do it regardless. Regardless of how they, they identify. They don't give a fuck if it's a WRM. <laughs> in fact, in fact, I think that's it's so that, stupid. That's, that's really, really stupid because at the end of the day, you've got, as I, as I said, I brought up briefly, there are transgender folks being murdered yeah. weekly. We are at, there's 25 to, today that have been murdered this year alone, predominantly yeah. of color and predominantly trans women. Right. And if we're not going to create safe spaces, what we're doing is basically accepting the fact that these women and men that identify as trans are, are being murdered. And that's okay. Let me basically. ask you um, before we go, I watched Boys Don't Cry. Oh, my mom made me watch that from a young age. <laughs> really? She did. My mom, you know what? Me and my mom are good friends now. Like, like she's like my best Did friend. Did she want you to watch it for you to feel better or scared? For me, she wanted for me to be scared. Do you remember Boys Don't Cry with Winona Ryder or no? Uh, um, Where she was. Po- I just know Winona from um, Stealing Edward Shit. the Hands and oh. um, <laughs> Stranger Things. It is an amazing movie, but basically she's living as a man. I yes. haven't seen it in some years, but gets a girlfriend. Yes. The girl's cool with it. She yep. felt it, knew, didn't give a fuck. Um, but she hung out with some guys. Mm-hmm. Huh? That was Hillary Swain. That was Nono Ryder, right? Oh, I wish okay, you preach. Say okay, engineer, wish... engineer <laughs> doing the thing. You know, you're <laughs> <white> <laughs> movies. Well, you <laughs> damn sure didn't correct me. Shit, <laughs> I didn't know. I just know Nono Ryder from that movie. I told you, I didn't know from that movie. Um, I just watched Stranger Things. That's probably why I said Nono. But anyway, love Stranger She Things. was hanging out with some men, and when they found out, I don't remember if they beat her up yeah. and raped her yeah. and, and killed killed him. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it was a scary ass place to be, but it taught you so much. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching it with my mom, and she was like, "If you ever have friends that are scared to come out or blah blah blah, you should make sure they have someone to talk to and be safe." I wish my mom did that. I'm just my mom did it as a scare tactic. I think <laughs> that she saw that I was, you know, constantly for her it was like, "Oh, I'm constantly wearing boys' clothes or masculine clothes," Aww. and for her it was just like, and 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 it's funny because. Fast forward a little bit, and I'll come back to that. Fast forward a little bit. Um, when I was in my teens and I was, you know, dating females and they didn't know, and then they found out, my mum too found out. And when my mum found out, she was like, say if these little girls, um, brothers and cousins and dad wants to come and do what what, what happened and boys don't cry. And she was very fearful of my safety. But she was scared, yeah. She, was, she, she still is scared. You know really? I mean? She watched Bat Chat, and I'm a grown man now, and I can, you know what I mean? I'm good. But in terms of, like, I don't fear... Does no. your mom acknowledge pussy? How I- is that all you got? Is that all you got? Just pussy. You were pissed. But, but my mom was really like after I watched it, she's like, you know, she she sent me a voice note. I wish I should play it. Well, anyway. She sent me a, oh, no, she sent me a voice so note, sweet. and she's like. Let me see if I can. Please, hear. that would be awesome. I would love to know, like, because just looking at you, I, I wonder if your mom is like, oh my god, he is so handsome and he's got a, he's got a yeah, family. Like my mom, me, and my mom, me and my mom shit. didn't have a good relationship growing up. That's great. Right. It was strange. Oh yeah, that's great. I'm oh, sorry, I thought you said we do. No, sorry. we we didn't growing up. We didn't have a good a good relationship because I was trying to find myself. She was obviously hoping that she would have a relationship with her daughter. Yeah. Um, and that never came. You know, what I mean, that never came to fruition. Yeah. And for a long time, we we didn't have a good relationship. And <laughs> I remember when when you know she started coming. To me, come with me to appointments and starting to learn um, about you know what it is that I'm going through. Um, she was like, I just hope that I have a better relationship with my son than I did with my daughter, you know. And I was like, Yeah, that's exactly what I needed to hear, kind of thing, because right. that's exactly what I want, oh. do you know what I mean? And that's exactly what we have. We have a great relationship, and that's it's so like sweet. finding myself was the first step to me loving myself. And prior to that, I didn't love myself. And in turn, it meant that my relationships with everyone and anyone around me was strained due to that. Mm. Um, I'm scrolling through my phone trying to find um, this. Um, she, she sent me so many. Okay, well, we're going to end with your voice note if we can. Can you go ahead and let our listeners know where they can find you? Oh, wait, I think, did you find it? 
okay. listeners, you can find me on Instagram at Rush London, Twitter at Rush London. I ain't gonna give out my Snapchat, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> These bitches might be and going put crazy. Put your information um, in the link of this episode. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. We in, can in do the that. Description. And if you want to see more of Rush, he is on the BK Chat episodes on YouTube. You've seen Jalissa and Flea, who we had on. Um, I'm just so grateful that um, he came and he is just as hot as he looks in pictures. I already snuck a little video because I don't know what I'm going to do. Look at myself <laughs> later. Sorry, Russia's wife. <laughs> All right. So this is what my mom said because she's still very much so uh, fearful for my safety. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I want to hear this. I know. Uh, it's quite, it's Hold quite it up. cute. Well, Hold it up I'm to the mic. Up. Hold it. I don't, even know if she, I don't even know if I should. If I should. No, this will be no, cool. This is it. Like, people. Hold on, hold on. You know, making new friends, meeting new people, just knowing, you know, who who you're really, you know, getting, you know, meeting or stuff like that. Okay. In other words, what she was saying is, after being on back chat, she's sure that a lot of people are going to be reaching out. She to sounds me. very supportive of you. Yeah, and, uh, she, she just to be like aware. She still of... doesn't know how to word it exactly. You could definitely. Hear the kind of caution. To me, that was, was all love. Yeah, but my but, mom, she is cautious because what she was trying to say is basically just be aware of like who's reaching out to you in terms of one, wanting to befriend you um, because of the sheer fact that, again, a lot of trans folks are murdered. And yeah. Yes. She's quite fearful of the fact that being in the States where, you know, it, it's, uh, it's prominent out here. Um, <laughs> well, we ain't shit. <laughs> she's quite fearful of who, who may seem as though they have good good intentions yeah but going to meet them that may not be the case oh okay. um, thank you mom well thank but, you yeah. mom and thank you so much rush for coming no on to thank horrible you decisions you were an amazing guest and i hope that our listeners learned Everybody's a lot from you. this episode um it's gonna be the I bk guess, chat yeah. redemption oh, they, hated us. Us. <laughs> they hated us last one but um thank you again so much for coming on we'll put all of your um social media links in the link of this bio we will also post you on our Horrible Decisions page. And for you guys listening, you guys can continue to follow us on Instagram at Horrible underscore Decisions. Um, and reach out to us. Again, thank you again for all of the love on iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, everywhere that you guys listen to us. And thank you. Um, oh, and bitch, we sold out for this motherfucking live show, ho. Hey. So we will see you guys. <laughs> you come. We will Bring see you guys. You'll have to come. Beat we'll it. see you guys December yeah. 1st here in NYC for our very first live show that is sold out, bitches. Right. Anyways, this has been another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Bye. Later.